watching Nissan Sports Beat. Nissan, innovation that excites. Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome to this special edition of Sports Beat, our college football preview. Today, it's all about Jeremiah, the Utah State Aggies. Yes, over the next half hour, we'll hear from players, head coach Matt Wells, and get to know the new offensive coordinator a little bit better. And the voice of the Aggies, Al Lewis, will share his inside perspective. Big Al is in studio. We begin, though, with the return of a couple of Aggie stars. Two straight years, quarterback Chucky Keaton's season ended early with an injured right knee. First game of last season, linebacker Kyler Fackrell's year ended with a knee injury. Well, now they're both back, and they say they are ready to go. Limping a little bit is Chucky Keaton. Well, we see Chucky Keaton kind of limping around on the field right now. And yeah, I, I feel great. Um, I've had another year of, of getting some extra work in, and and really just uh, lifting and getting my legs a lot stronger. And I'm fitting these slacks a little bit tighter, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that as well. You kind of said the same thing last year, that you had time to work, and believe it or not, my leg is stronger. I didn't say anything about the slacks, though, so I think no. that's, a, that's, a tell sign. that's a telltale sign right there. So, no, I, I, I truly do feel a lot better. Um, I think it's going to help that I'm not playing with a knee brace. I don't have to rely on it as much. And... Uh, I'm going back to the knee sleeve. That's that's vintage Charles Keaton the fourth right there. You just hope and pray for that kid that he can start, um, start to finish and go all the way through and stay healthy. Um, not for just us as a team or as a university or anything like that, but for the kid. The kid deserves that. Um, and uh, who he is and and um, his makeup, I think, have been strengthened by the adversity that he's gone through. I don't think it's made him. I think it's just strengthened him. Um, tremendous young, uh, young man with a deep set of values and principles and spirituality to him that um, we all love. And the kid has been, it's been intertwined in the fabric of the turnaround at Utah State. Are you getting tired of people coming up and asking him, are you going to be healthy? Are you getting tired of that yet? I mean, For two straight years? I mean, the obvious answer is yes. I don't just ask everyone. Else. Like, but at the same time, that means that people actually care. So that's, I mean, you could not ask, and I feel a little sad, but it's whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where, it, where it's going. Tyler Fackrell! It's 100%. Um, I will wear a brace, at least for the first little bit. But, I mean, I can run around. We've been doing seven-on-seven seven type stuff um, just as, uh, as a team, and I've, it's felt really good to just kind of run around and play football again. He is hungry. He's a quiet leader, you know, he's a very confident leader. I don't know if I've had this kind of level of excitement probably since the first year um, that I played here at Utah State. You know, it's, it's been a long time. To have all those guys back um, makes you a better coach. All right, the voice of the Utah State Aggies on KVNU Radio, Big Al Lewis is here. And Al, first of all, thanks for coming down. Sure. Uh, Chucky Keaton, deja vu all over again for this kid. You know, you just feel for him. He's beloved, about as beloved as anybody who's ever played football for the Aggies. I don't know. I've seen more 16 jerseys than any number <laughs> ever in Utah State history. And I think all the people just want him to be ready to go this year and to have a full season. The full season he had, it was 11 wins. The question is, can he do it? Well, I think he can. I think he's had more time physically to really get over that knee from before. I, it was not badly hurt last season. So I think that the whole time he has had has been a whole lot better. Now, Kyler Fackrell, before suffering that injury against Tennessee, he was an All-American candidate. He was a likely first-round draft pick. That's where he was projected at the time. Coming back now, can we expect him to play at the same level that he was playing at two years ago? Uh, when I... I thought he might see some action in spring, and you could see he was on the sidelines. But when I talked to him just the other day, he said all of a sudden that explosiveness has just come back with mm -hmm. his extra time off and more rehab. So I think he can because, I mean, he's a guy who can run, and he's huge and can make plays. And, and so I think, he, I think he can come back, and, and he is uh, you know, a little more vocal about things and wanting to be more of a leader of this team. Apparently the Mountain West Conference feels like he'll be back because <laughs> he's picked the preseason defensive player of the year. Yeah, so that answers that question. Hey, guys, back on uh, June 26th, the Aggie football family was rocked when 
Four football players and a former softball player were involved in a horrific car crash in Cache Valley. Defensive linemen Adewale Adeoye, Edmund Faimalo, John Taylor, and Travis Seafelt were in the SUV that was hit by a semi. Uh, they are all home from the hospital. Head coach Matt Wells now with an update on their status and also the status uh, emotionally with his team. You know, John Taylor uh, will start day one of training camp. Edmund and Wale um, are progressing. Um, it's hard to put a timeline on those guys, but they're progressing. Um, I see them practicing uh, at some point. Travis is um, right now our, our doctors and our medical staff and our trainers tell me it's going to be hard for him to make it back this year. We're amazed right now that we didn't have anybody die in this crash. After coming so close to losing members of his football family, it's now time to focus on football. However, the memory of that Friday afternoon in June still has a deep effect on this football team. For me, it's a uh... It's always, it's, it's definitely impactful because, I mean, I've been with a few of them for several years. Some guys that I'll actually like call for if I ever need something and, and that type of relationship that we have. And um, to see something like that was, was, was bad, but I know it could have been a whole lot worse. So I'm, I'm thankful for where they are now. I know that we may not have guys in the, uh, in the near future, but I know that they're going to work as hard as they can to get back as quickly as they can. I know how bad you know, they want to be out on the field, and so I think we can definitely use that as motivation you know, if, when we're tired or whatever it may be to be like, you know, we have to stay strong for those guys. If anything, I, I think as a team we're ready to not take anything for, for granted and just to know how special and how blessed we are to, to be in the position we are because we know that there's some guys that may not get the chance to play this year. So uh, just got to take advantage of everything. And at the end of the day, I'm playing for them. And I can say that for myself. I'm sure a lot of other guys can as well. And um, so they're, they're going to be kind of our motivation for this upcoming year. And it has brought us a little closer. I think we all um, maybe value life a little bit more and maybe love a little harder and and realized that uh, you know that was a that was a tough thing, and we almost lost them. And um, the fact that they're alive and, and walking, and we'll all play again. I mean, there's no question the hand of God was on that car. Al Lewis, this was an emotional blast to this entire team, but especially to head coach Matt Wells. You know, very emotional when he talks about that day. Yeah, he told me he once had a player who uh, who died when he was coaching him at Tulsa, hmm. but he. Uh, you could tell right off the bat he didn't want to answer his phone that day when it was happening. Yeah. He told me, and all of a sudden he felt like he had to, and then he found out what it was. And they were there very quickly and saw the aftermath and, and were definitely shocked. Yeah. They thought for sure it was going to turn out to be a worse day than it was. It's great now that there's a chance all four will play football yeah. again. That's amazing. But as Coach Wells said, things like this can have a positive impact. Yeah. Not taking things for granted, understanding how quickly things can be taken away from you can have a positive impact on this football the team. The team, uh, the players I talked to in Vegas, they, in their workouts, they've dedicated an area where they used to work out that's kind of these guys' area, and they kind of look over there, okay, that's where they'd be. And they've kind of been motivated, I think, to be using their memories, at least, and doing it for them in some of the preseason stuff. Of course, everybody's glad they're still here. Yes, so. absolutely. All right, when we come back, it's the Battle of the Socks and two new coordinators. I got, one main I, got, thing? I got a laundry list of things that we need to do before we, uh, before we get to game one. Yeah, you'll hear from Josh Heupel. What can Aggie fans expect from his offense? The color coordination for you as the coach might be the best. Uh, you like that? that? I was wondering if somebody time. would if somebody would, would appreciate that. And I'm glad you noticed. Yeah. Do you think Matt Wells is that color coordinated? Probably. Oh come on uh, now. No. <laughs> no, he's probably not wearing socks right now. He got some penny loafers on or something yeah. like that, huh? He knows me too well. We've known each other for a little while, but those were cute blue socks he had on, weren't they? <laughs> he said he has a pair for you. Does he? Yeah. As long as it's Aggie blue, I'll take it. It's a little different shade than yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matt Wells and the rival coach, <laughs> Boise State's Brian Harson, have a pretty good relationship that goes back a few years as they were both tight end coaches. Yeah, and he was, uh, Wells was a tight end coach at Tulsa, Harson at Boise State. Harson liked the way Wells' tight ends were playing, so he called him up and asked him for some tips, and that's how the association began. <laughs> and it's common, of course, among coaches to call up and get advice from other coaches. Well, Matt Wells did that to a then Oklahoma offensive coordinator, Josh Heupel, a few years back. Now, Heupel is running the offense in Logan. I had a chance to sit down with Heupel to find out what Aggie fans can expect from his offense. The 
Josh Heupel and what a road to Oklahoma he's had. He started at Weber State as a redshirt, then went to Snow Junior College in Utah. He was noticed by the Oklahoma coaches, and he's a rug rat and a gym rat, and he shows it when he comes out on the field. When Aggie fans think of you, Oklahoma, running up and down the field, passing all over the place, scoring tons of points, is that what they're going to see? here in Logan. Yeah, it's certainly what we hope they see. Yeah, uh, that's uh, our expectations. Um, you know, uh, first and foremost, we've got to find a way to win every week. Um, after that, it's about scoring as many points. What's the one thing that you need to get done as you start fall camp before game one? <laughs> There's not just one, one thing. <laughs> and there I got, one I main got, thing? I got a laundry list of things that we need to do before we, uh, before we get to game one. Ultimately, uh, it's about us coming in, competing, and working extremely hard every single day. Uh, during fall camp to, to lead up uh, to our first ball game and give us a chance to be successful. North left, curl, hold it, hold it, hold it. Run that last one again. I have a philosophy of what we want to be. Schmidt, you got the wheel route over here. Ultimately, our personnel is going to dictate what we can do to, to compete at a championship level. Come back and meet the ball. Great job on the perimeter right there. Uh, it's my responsibility to, to, to look at our personnel. Young guys that are coming in as well that weren't here this spring. Uh, put the 11 best guys on the football field, and then give a, put them in a chance, uh, or give them a chance to be successful and and, uh, and light up the scoreboard. When you look across the country, Oklahoma, big biggest time you can get, big time football. What have you taken from Stoops, from that program, that atmosphere, that will make this Aggie program closer to what the Sooners were? I think at the end of the day, there's a million little things that add up to to the big things uh, that everybody's going to see. Um, but this, this program has been ex extremely successful. It's got a great brand. Uh, it's part of why I came here. And, you know, in the short time that I've been here, that's what I've seen from this group of individuals. All right, you've heard it in the story a little bit. Heupel, no stranger to Utah, spent his freshman year at Weber State, wanted to be with Dave Arslanian, who could uh, really help quarterbacks. Then he was injured, transferred to Snow, all set to go to Utah mm -hmm. State when Dave Arslanian became the head coach. But then he saw that a freshman started, and they opened it back up in Oklahoma, and yep. there is history That's won a right. national championship. That's right. Well, now the Heupel's here. What kind of an impact will they have on this offense? How much different will it be? Uh, they say not a lot different. It didn't look a lot different schematically, but there will be different ways that they do things with the down-the-field throws. The running game and the blocking is a little bit different. I, uh, they feel like it can really help again. Maybe that running game just a little bit. Again, we, that could be... A little bit of a question mark on the Aggie side, but we've got veteran people back there, so yeah. we'll see how that works. And veteran, a few veteran offensive line too. Yeah. He demands instant credibility and instant respect, though. National yeah. championship runner up to the Heisman, <laughs> Oklahoma Sooners. So he talks, they listen. Yeah, they do. And Chucky already said the quarterback room is a lot different yeah. with him in charge, and yeah. and he's enjoyed that so far too. I think it's re-energized Chucky a little bit. All right. Well, that's not the only one, of course. Matt Wells has another uh, <laughs> uh, coordinator, the defensive coordinator. And he's not really new no. to Utah State. It's Kevin Clune, coach the Aggie linebackers a couple years ago. Last year he went to Hawaii to be the D coordinator. Now he's back in Logan as the boss of the defense. Are you concerned with two new coordinators? You know, um, I should be, according to everybody else around here. It seems like they everybody keeps asking me, but you know, you look at defense, and I mean, Kevin was our linebacker coach for five years, and and was on my original staff, and I mean, my wife says he took a one-year sabbatical to, to uh, Hawaii, and now he's back, and it's been a very seamless transition, a lot of continuity. He kind of developed the defense that we have now to begin with. He was the linebackers coach before he went to Hawaii to be the coordinator, and so. Um, a lot of it, he, he was able to kind of hit the ground running because it was all what he was used to. He knew our defense, and so um, it'll be a lot of the same. Um, I think there could be some philosophies on third down or whatever that might change up a little bit, but um, overall it'll be you know, similar to defense. The right side throws and intercepted by Jalen Davis. Well, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the chemistry and the culture in the locker room and the leadership and knowing that there's some probably some more adversity coming and how are we going to handle that as a program and resetting our culture and our standard within that team meeting room each and every summer. That's what I'm more worried about than the coordinators. Right the whole way, throws to the right and it's picked off by the Aggies! Preseason Defensive Player of the Year, what does that mean to you? It's, I mean, it's a huge honor. There are a lot of great players um, in this, on my own team or in this uh, conference, so it's, it's obviously a huge honor. Um, but it doesn't change the way I'm going to approach the season or the way that I play or anything like that. You know, I, 
it doesn't add stress or anything. It's just something, I mean, that's nice, but I'm still going to just, you know, play the way I play. And uh, hopefully it turns out that I'm worthy of that at the end. So now you got uh, the guy who's picked to be the the defensive player of the year. And, and we've got some really good players on defense too. So this guy's got to be pretty special if, if we don't have a few of our names from the defensive side as picked to be player of the year. Because I know we've got some good dudes over there. So while defensively with a new coordinator, do you really see any kind of drop off? There's familiarity there, right? I, uh, yeah, with Clune being around Logan before and doing it, I don't think they changed uh, the system. And you know, a lot of the preseason polls say Nick Vigil's the best defensive yeah, player yeah. in the conference too. So we got two of them, and both <laughs> not of them a bad are. problem to have, huh? <laughs> hey, uh, what did the coaches do on their summer vacation? They'll answer that next. Big physical, strong is what jumps out at me about Utah State. And what kind of respect are the other Mountain West coaches giving the Aggies? That answer also when we come back. What did you do on your summer vacation? Well, I, um, as a veteran going into my third year, <laughs> I don't think it's called a vacation anymore. I think you're just out of town. Oh, let's see, you're talking concerts. Luke Bryan and the Eagles went to those. I hang out with my kids. Uh, we went back to East Coast and visited Annapolis where we used to live and, and coaching at the Naval Academy, saw a lot of friends. And I haven't gone on it yet. We'll go up to McCall, Idaho, and we'll spend a few days up there. And my family and I, we're, we're constantly together all summer, so we're boating. Uh, took our three kids and we went in D.C. and did some of that in, in New York and obviously saw another Dodgers game and watched my guy catch Kershaw. And I can tell you this, I'm going to a remote lake uh, that no one else knows about, and I'm going to spend it with my family. Interesting to see what all the other coaches like to do when they have time off instead <laughs> of vacation. The general theme, though, spend as much time as they can with their family. Yeah, because starting next week, they'll spend all their time with their other family, the football teams they coach. It's always interesting to hear what the other coaches in the league think of the Aggies. What is it about when you look at Utah State and their program, what really just comes right out at you? The biggest thing I notice is just how physical and tough they are. Certainly their speed came into play, uh, but uh, that's a hard-nosed, disciplined, tough football program. And the, those are elements that I personally appreciate and admire. They know who they are, and they play really well, and they're going to be a really tough opponent. You know, talking to other coaches when they throw in the tape, this is what they see. What do you see about Utah State? Big, physical, strong. Big physical strong is what jumps out at me about Utah State. And then on offense, uh, they have some speed and they have some weapons. But what I've seen is a big, strong, physical group of mature players. You know, you can tell that they've had continuity and they've been together a long time. Stuff for Utah State now that they've gone from towards the last up near the top that you want to pattern after? Well, you know what, I, I appreciate the fact when you look at Utah State, I mean, um, I think they know who they are. Um, they look and said, okay, if we're going to be successful, we're going to have to be rugged, tough, explosive football players. You know, if you look at Boise State, Boise State always won. When Boise State was 1AA, they were winning. I look more at the programs that never won what they did. And certainly, New Mexico's unique. And that's why I have so much respect, you know, to be able to have the resiliency to come up with a plan and then see it through is what I really respect. Al Lewis, I go back to Greg Popovich of the San Antonio Spurs in the early mid-90s saying, I want to be where the Jazz are. Well, they got there and surpassed that. Everybody but Boise State saying that I want to be where the Aggies are now. The perfect storm of great administrators starting to build facilities and make it work, and then you get the football team working, and you go to four, four straight bowl games and three straight bowl wins. That's what it takes. They're winning now. All right, now it's time to get you all pumped up for the upcoming season. Ooh, blood pressure will rise. Foaming at the mouth begins when we come back. All right, Aggies open up the season 33 days at home with Southern Utah. Now it's time to get us all pumped up for another season, guys. Yeah, here's a sample of what you can expect from the Aggies this fall.
All right, Big Al, you ready? Uh, oh, I'm okay. I'm ready for football. I was ready. I was. Right. I'm really ready now. You get an OGO golf bag or travel oh. bag to take with you in style when you go on the trip with the Aggies. Uh, Thanks for coming in, bud. Thanks. Next week, it's Thanks, all about the youth, Jeremiah. Can't wait.